Evening everyone, so tonight we're at the Griffin It's a Vauxhall Astra 1.7 CDTI and it's on a 63 plate So it's a 1.7 I think the engine code's either DTA or DTS but On my scan tool it's only shown it as maybe an LUD No matter So the customer's complaint, it goes into limp home mode He's calling it the unfixable car. I mean, several garages with no resolve. So here's a look at the fault codes. A P088, fuel rail pressure high. You can see it's failed, failed, failed. Then the mass airflow, low frequency. So that's past this one. We then have an intake air temperature sensor with high. Diesel particulate filter, problems there. And but it's actually not ran this one, so it could have a blocked DPF. Uh, HVI electronic control unit software, VIN not programmed, incorrect immobiliser dent. Mm. So what I know, it's had another engine put in it. So let's come back out of here. Uh, there we go, let's go into that. Let's have a little look at the fuel pressures. Uh, water pump with clutch. I've not I have no idea. High fuel pressure, Roddy. Is it going into lump pump mode? Aye. Cheers, my man. So here we go. Fuel real pressure high. So high. Wrong pump. Kink return. I don't know. Pump no time properly. When a timing belt job. Mass airflow. Need to have a look at that. Right, so let's come back at that. Live data. We'll go into. Let's look at the, the mass airflow first of all. Barrow, barrow, that's right. Boost pressure. I oh, need to take it around. MAF. There's a MAF's got a reading. It's responding. Hertz are working. So that looks okay to me. So maybe somebody's disconnected it, don't know. Let's go to fuel system data. Uh, on what and fuel fuel here command off or fuel pressure regulator command 41%. Desired so that so the desired is 25 megapascals and the fuel real pressure sensor is at 25 megapascals, so that seems all good at the moment. Fuel real pressure sensor. 0 0.9 volts, seems a bit low, but could be correct. Uh, desired, desired, math. No, there's nothing. Nothing untowards there, so we'll, we'll think with that one. We'll think with that one and that one. We'll just take it up a bit. So there's rev limiting on it, so. Checks out all lovely there. Can't see a problem there. Hmm. So a quick look at the data pids for the DPF. So DPF pressure at idle two kilopascal, but the DPF pressure sensor is half a volt. But if we rev it, three thousand. That's too high. I would say that's restricted. Let's see. So call that 90 kilopascals, I need to do the conversion. I think this is our first problem. 90 kilopascals equals 13 pounds <laughs> per square inch. Far too high. So this thing needs a regen and to start with. And obviously it ain't got no fuel. So we need to go and put half a tank of diesel in it before we do anything else. Before there's a visual inspection, Roddy the man discovered a tie wrap around that, the fuel pressure sensor and it fell away without even putting the tab in. So our theory is, this fuel pressure high is caused by this plug. Make a connection, then disconnecting. I would imagine, eh, Roddy? Could be, aye. Sounds good. like a good theory for a Monday night. Aye. But, uh, We've gained two ties. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Still there, eh? What do you say, are you? But it fell, did it fell off without, it you, fell off, aye. without you pressing that? Aye. So we we'll take the ties off and see Aye. if it clicks back in. 
So here's our original switch that came off the car, so they've replaced it. So that again. Aye, it goes that way. Aye. Right. Was it a nice click? Yeah. No, it's no hiding in. It's no hiding in. So we're doing a pin drag test on this. You can see, but it seems to be okay. See that? Aye. Uh, feel even, eh? Aye. So we're just checking the wee connectors there. They feel good. So we still cannot get this to lock right into the fuel pressure sensor. So no, no, this thing here. But we're wondering as it goes along, it's maybe. Hmm. Coming loose. Coming loose, and that's what creating the P088. Yeah. So, I've mucked about with this little tab in here, and here we go. Aye, that's it locked. That's it locked now. Aye. It's locked now, so. Right. We just keep pressing on this. Ah, that yellow bit. Wonder if, even if we do that, eh? Aye. Right, put it back in and see. I think this is our best guess so far. What we're going to do. It was going to monitor the fuel rail pressure voltage. So you see with key on engine off, 0 0.37. And if Roddy wiggles that thing about, we're not getting anything here. In fact, what we could do is customise it. Deselect all fuel. Just go for one. This will make it really fast. Right, not much faster. So he's, Roddy's wiggling that thing. I can't see any dropouts. No, that's all right like that, isn't it? Aye. It's all come out though, but if I want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, there it is. That's it. That's it now. So you can see it. It went up there. So right. So we cleared the codes, and with the fuel real pressure sensor disconnected, we're getting two codes. P088 fuel rail high pressure current and in history and a P0193 fuel rail pressure sensor circuit high and that's current as well. So it's funny that it generates the two codes even though it's key on engine off. So let's try and clear that again. Clear codes. Continue. Codes. Nothing there at all. So Back to the same codes. So I wonder if this car will start with this disconnected. This is we try to crank it. So the car will not start with the fuel pressure disconnected. But the, pre the sensor is connected back in. Uh, we still have the original sensor that came out of the car because we believe they've been chasing this code for a long while. But the other thing we're aware of, this car got a new ECM put in the thing. So let's be aware of that. So if we look at this, let's clear the codes, clear codes, continue, right? Codes. So the car has never even ran and it's coming back with this hard fault fuel rail pressure sensor high, right? And the thing's not even running. So let's go into the data and look to see what voltage that we are getting. So data, uh, fuel system data, so 0 0.37, right. So Rod, you got that other sensor there and we'll just plug that in my man and see what that says at atmospheric, right. So that's us disconnected, it's went to five volts. So we're going to plug in the original sensor. Oh, there we go, there's a difference. 0 0.49 so it's reading higher pressure outside the rail than this one did inside the rail right so let's go back let's see if our code's clear so go back so we'll go codes menu codes so that's code already disconnected it and it says current and history so let's see if this will now clear so clear codes Continue, right, codes. So even with the, the original sensor, we are still getting this P088. So what I was thinking, with having a new PCM installed, I was thinking that we could go back, oops, go to functional test, 
special function and do a fuel pressure regulator learn because if it's had a new PCM you would imagine it has to relearn its pressures so it would know where like say that sensor or that sensor where its data point is it's zero point so worth a shot so let's see what it says oh we want to plug that we'll go back right here so we've plugged the original sensor back in 0.37 volts so let's go back and we still have the P88 code functional test let's see actuator test no, nothing there so special functions learn functions no no learn functions well there's another learn function oh crank position reluctor wheel relearn because you've got to do that when you put a new PCM in it so I wonder if they've done that maybe they have no sure I think we should try that first mm, well what other road are you going to do well if they've never done that when the new PCM's installed you can get misfires and everything like that when a, a petrol car Let's see what he says. Right, continue. So, layer. Turn ignition and then turn on again. Will I do that, Rudy? Right. Back on, continue. Completed, it says. Continue. So, we've done. You want to start the camera, man? Just to see if we're still up and running. Still too high. Three of codes. Will you put that engine off and then engine on? Right. The ignition's still on now. Continue. No, so that's still there. So let's go into. I hear a click in there already. Special functions. So fuel pressure regulators functions. Run engine at idle speed. Right, continue. Mission off, my man. <laughs> so I'll just leave it off. Continue. Ignition on, ready? Successful, it says. Continue. Start the car, Rudy. So we'll get new codes, a P88, a 1297 fuel pressure regular not learned in history. Put the key engine off, Rudy. Ignition on. So we've got a new code, Rudy, about fuel pressure regulator not learned, and that's in history. Right, so we'll go back out of this. History, yeah, we'll right. clear the codes. Continue. Codes. Hey, there we go. So start so the car, Rudy. Right. So that's the first time the car's cleared the codes. Codes. That's it. So there you go. There's the voltage diminishing so it is going back to 0 0.37 i would imagine but the pcm had to relearn its new voltage values when this new one went in so and it's idling at 0 0.9 so
so idling 0 0.9 which is low but never mind that looks good I think that fault that's full right so tomorrow we'll do the DPF give that a clean out maybe need I think it's really full so maybe need to use a treatment on it but uh, at least that's cleared that code let's just check it mm. Oh, that's wonderful! Cheers! We started to do its regeneration itself, and you can see now our pressure's at zero. So, Rod, if you go to 3,000 RPM, there you go. Big difference. Four. That's fine, my man. Temperature of the exhaust got up to about 600 degrees. It was real toasty. So, just to prove a point, fingers crossed. There we go. It's a fix. Cheers.